Hello, this is Jeff Robertson once again, National Sales Manager for Penton Audio USA and Atis Electronics. This is a tutorial video showing you how to use the Atis Studio software, which is our software platform used for pretty much all of our DSP devices, excluding the UAP G2. The AT Studio is used for the Echo Canceling System DSP as well as the Linked Audio Processor, the LAP for large um, high bandwidth audio distribution uses, as well as the IDA8 or IDA8 uh, system used for our mass notification and supervised paging and control systems. Right now I'm just going to show you how to launch the AT Studio as well as connect up to any one of your devices. I have an ECS demo unit here in my office. The connection device, the search, the connecting and configuration all is pretty much the same for all of them. Let's get started. I already have a T-Studio. Now to show you real quick the version I'm using which is current as of the recording of this video in January of 2013 is 1.0.0.73. So please make sure you grab the newest version off the website and I'll also show you how to check and update the version of your machine once you're connected. Okay, so here's my T-Studio. I just launched it and as you can see I've got a blank screen, nothing going on here. Uh, what I first want to do is I'll go up to my view and I want to go down here to device management. Now this is used so you can actually talk to all your devices and that includes your RS-485 serial remote control devices such as your URC, uh, your paging station devices, your PPM, your IT files, and any device that is physically connected either via the network or to your computer, you need to go here to actually do your management and set up your configuration. So let's go to device management and it pulls up my screen here in the bottom. Now I've already previously connected so let's just pretend that uh, we don't see this right here and the first thing I want to do is click down here on the bottom left where it says search and I will search and you can see down here in the bottom right it's actually showing the search. Now through the searching it takes a little while even though I only have one is because on the ECS's I can have up to 32 of these devices networked together. Um, on the LAP, actually with the TSNET direct connected to each other, I can have up to 128 of those devices together on a network. And then with the IDA8 system uh, for the mass notification, supervised paging, audio distribution, and messaging system, uh, you can actually have up to 32 on a local network and then 32 local networks globally networked together. So it can get quite expansive. Please allow the search to finish, but I only have one unit here, and this is my unit. Now, the IP address, I'll just highlight this, it's 192.168.100.5. That is the default IP address that you're going to get all your units. If you are hooked up via a network and a dynamic you know, host protocol or DHCP type of network, you don't have to worry about your network setting or your IP setting within your card. But just to refresh you guys, if you, I'm using Windows um, XP right here, but if you have our Windows 7 or XP and you're direct connecting up to your unit like I am here, let me show you how you go in to make sure that you can connect. Go to your control panel and once you go to control panel you want to go to network and internet and right when you get a network and like your network sharing center and right up here is your change adapter settings. This is changing your adapters, your wireless adapter, your actually network or ethernet card adapter and all the other stuff. So we are a local um, area connection right here. I'm not using wireless but as you can see down here my wireless is engaged so you can actually have your wireless running while you're doing this direct connect. There, will, there is no conflict. Just make sure your IPs are together. So I'll double click this to open it up and we want to go to properties. So I go to properties and here's all my properties from my local area or hardwired connection into my computer. And you want to go to Internet Pro, uh, Protocol version 4 and go to properties there. And this is where you would make your changes. Now, you're, most of you are going to have obtain an IP address automatically enabled, which means you're connected up to a DHCP or, D, or dynamic host communications protocol, which such as a network switch or any switch that actually will assign you an IP address and will allow you to talk to other IP addresses. 
uh, since I'm direct connected, I need to make sure I'm in the same network or address family and area as the device. So I set my computer up for 192.168.100.50. Remember the device is dot six, and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 is filled in automatically, and I don't need a gateway because I'm connected up. So I'm okay there. Everybody's happy. So that's how you make sure you change your computer to make sure you're in the same family, so you can direct connect up to any of the machines via the AT Studio software. Uh, one important note, you do not need a direct uh, connect cable such as a crossover cable if you're doing this. If you have anything, that's any computer probably made within the last five or six years, it should do the switch over automatically. If you have an older type of computer or software, you may have to use a crossover cable to do direct connection. So just keep that in mind. All right, back to the software. Here's my machine. Remember, I could have up to 32 of these. And we've got right here, it says devices, the type. I've got an ECS, Echo Canceling System, DSP. The ATSNet, this is actually just the hardware identifier. Here's the physical serial number of the machine, which is unique to the machine. And here's the IP address that it comes configured in. The redundancy address, that's used for evac and mass notification purposes, which is very specialized, which we will not address in this video. And the status is normal. If there's a fault or whatever, you could actually highlight this and go in there and actually it would have a uh, drop down here and you could actually view any fault messages in there as well. Now, I have not gone into this machine and done anything with the software, so there is no name. But any name I give the machine and the software would appear right here. And your communication, which means it's showing it's disconnected right there. When I highlight any of these right here in this drop down window is going to be all my options for whatever machine I've got highlighted here. Remember you can have up to 32 ECSs or 128 LAPs. So I got the one highlighted and I'm just going to go over here and say connect. And it's connected. You see my connection if I disconnect it. See my connection opens up if I hit connect. Right there my little icon there in communication says connect and away we go. All right, so now we are physically connected to the machine, and here's all my options I can do with this machine once I am connected. Now, I means I'm connected. I'm not uploading and downloading or whatever. It just means I'm connected. The machine is still doing its thing. It's still running the software. It's still running the audio, passing audio, processing it. The only time you interrupt that is when you're physically going in and you're storing designs, you're updating anything with the software, or making any software changes or changes any of the network. Then it's going to physically disconnect the audio, go through the configuration changes, and then re and ask you if you want to reconnect the audio once it's done. Some of these other things like reading versions and stuff like that really doesn't do anything with the software live and cause it to disconnect. So you could do a lot of this while the machine is actually live and running um, in your installation. Now, one thing that's very important with all these is here is an update. Before you want to update, you can go and actually read the version of the software firmware that's actually inside the machine to make sure we're compatible. So I just click on read version and it just brings up the window. And here we go. The machine I'm connected to, here's the processor, the DSP chip, the net card, all the stuff, the AEC chips that are inside there, and even a telephone card. For people that don't do a lot of conferencing or large mic systems, AEC is an audio echo canceling chip. It's a four channel chip in there. Um, so, right now, as you can see, the current version and compatible version, this is actually the version of my software. The current version is actually what's in the unit. And we can see everything is lining up. It's all black. Now, if for whatever reason the machine was using some earlier or even maybe newer in some cases uh, version, this would be displayed in red. So you would know, okay, I've got a problem. Sometimes, depending on the version of software that you're using in your software and the version of uh, software firmware that's in the machine, sometimes you can go back and forth and, and compile and store and there's no problem. But it's always a good idea to make sure you're running the current software firmware. Now, if I wanted to update, what I would do is I would click on update. And that's the serial number and the name, which I haven't been in there. So there's no name on this thing. And I said, OK, because remember, you could have up to 32 ECSs on there. I click OK. Now it's going to ask me to go to the update file. If you notice, the default goes to program files of TS and a T studio. And there's your version right there. So once you are in this, you could go to your, your update files. And once you do that, now you can select the machine you're actually connecting up to. I'm connected up to the ECS, and there's the ASU, which is T-Studio Update is what ASU stands for. I could click on that, and I hit Open, 
and now it's actually updated it happens fairly quickly and then it's going to say it's going to reboot the machine is that okay and I said yes let's restart the machine and now the machine's going through its update process so the only way to know when it goes through there is to actually look at the front of the machine it'll turn the display off all the LEDs will go off it'll cycle the power down and then power it back up and go through its reboot process so you'll know when all that's complete when the screen comes back live on the front of the ECS okay the machine has rebooted my update is complete now once the update is complete I have to reconnect back to the machine so I just highlight the one that I'm in there and hit connect if you didn't see it just go back and perform your search again on the search you can just search for anything in there and it's going to look for any 192.168 IP address if you physically change the IP address of the unit from the front of the unit which you can do through the data jog wheel and the enter and the back buttons on the front with the display well then you can go down here and say search by IP and you can actually enter the IP address that you want to look for at that point and do your search that way so you can either do a blind search and it's going to look for your 192.168 or do a uh, dedicated search to the IP that you designate and that you've changed on the unit so we will connect and we are connected there's a couple of things that we could do here on these remote plug-in this is where we actually go in and we can actually through the software actually tell it you know, here's your PPM your URCs your desk pads that we could use so this is where you could actually go in through the software and set up your PPM microphones and URC remote controls and remote update is where you actually if you're updating your software and firmware you need to make sure you update the software and firmware and all your remotes as well so everybody's running on the same platform the telephone card setting this is where you actually go in and you set your country code because remember these are all you know over the world that we sell these and your FSK DTMF is the most common use um, and you can enable or disable a password um, to be used with your telco card for somebody to use it for dialing in or answering your ATS net deploying this is where you can actually set up your ATS net now that's only used with the LAP as well as the IDA 8 systems for mass notification that use the ATS net the ECS does not use the TS net it doesn't have the network cards to do that they direct connect up to expand up your chime data store is actually storage for your remote for your pre announced and post announced chimes and tones whatever you want to do and we have a log so you can actually go in here in the log and we will say refresh the log and then here's actually all the events that happen within the unit that I'm hooked up to so it actually keeps a history log of everything that's happened. Uh, time setting is another useful feature uh, this is where you actually set the time zone the actual date and time and we got a couple other options right here one is your network time protocol and you can also give it up to five IP addresses of network time service so this could be a network time server on your end users network or it can actually be any of the US atomic clock sites all of our DSPs have message storage you know audio message storage or audio file storage as well as an event schedule so you can have timed events such as message playbacks control output triggers preset changes what have you so being able to be synced up on time is very critical also daylight savings time we could set these up manually so if you manually set the date but you're not hooked up to a network protocol and you want to turn daylight savings time on and off here's where you do it and there's the type you know and the time difference is actually you know one hour as you see there and of course the 2013 so March 10th at 2 a.m. and it ends at November actually third November 3 and I'll say right and there we go so we're all written so now we make sure we have everything in there and there we go so that's the most common uses that you would do for connecting and hooking up and some real simple network configurations on um, any device that's hooked up to a T-Studio